Second year A-level physics is full of things orbiting, moving in circles, whether that be a planet or a satellite, or whether that be a cyclotron, or whether that be a mass spectrometer or something else. The trick is to remember that as soon as you see something moving in a circle or undergoing circular motion, first thing you do is crack out mv squared over r. This is centripetal force, isn't it? Good writing me. Everything else then flows from this. We know that we have a centripetal force when it comes to gravity, but what is supplying that centripetal force? Well, it's the force of gravity, and what do we know that that is equal to? According to Newton's law of gravitation, it's equal to gmm over r squared. From there, we can cancel out one of the m's, one of the r's, and then we can rearrange. Alternatively, if you're looking for frequency and that kind of thing, you could instead use m omega squared r. Again, one of the m's cancels, and then we can say that omega is 2 pi f. We also know that that is going to go over here. Incidentally, this is how we prove Kepler's law. But the other time that you see it really is magnetic fields. A charged particle in a magnetic field goes in a circle, mv squared over r, again. You're less likely to have to use m omega squared r with magnetic fields, you still can though. And what is this equal to? Well, it's equal to b q v. Again, one of the v's cancels, and we can find out what the radius of the orbit depends on. If it is a cyclotron like this here though, we can use m omega squared r. If we're looking for the frequency or what the AC should be, then we can say that again, omega is two pi f. Just remember that the AC that you apply across this cyclotron, positive and negative, and then it switches, AC frequency is equal to frequency of orbit. Now, lots of people on my original video to do with charged particles in magnetic fields and the cyclotron said, no, it has to be half. No, think about it. Every time a charged particle, well, it's usually a proton, isn't it, for this? Every time a proton goes across here, when it crosses this way, the polarity of the Ds needs to switch once, but then by the time it comes back round, the polarity needs to have switched again. So in other words, every full turn, the polarity needs to flip twice. So therefore, that means that the frequency is going to be the same as the frequency of the AC needed that's applied across the Ds. Could be a pendulum as well. If we have a pendulum that's going through equilibrium at this point, that's equilibrium. We know there's going to be mv squared over r again because it is at that point circular motion, not at any other point, just at equilibrium. What's supplying it? Well, it's the tension in the wire or the thread or whatever. But of course, we not only have to supply the centripetal force, we also have to supply extra force to balance mg as well. A quick little trick, as soon as you see something moving in a circle, undergoing a circular motion, chances are you're going to have to equate mv squared over r or m omega squared r to one of these forces. It is possible for this to be also equal to kqq over r squared if we are talking about electric fields as well, but I haven't really seen a question prop up about that. So I hope you find this helpful. If you did, then please leave a like. If you have any questions or suggestions as to what I can do next, tip-wise, then put them down below in a comment. See you next time.